taken from the book Stories and Tales of the Rhianer. The Tournament of Roses Welcome to Nimriadil, the city of alchemy as you call it the bearded man with bulging green eyes and brown skin smiled showing all his teeth. Thank you for inviting me, dear Master Pyreal Belader approached a huge and luxurious armchair in the center of the room under the guidance of Pyreal, the master alchemist. On the coffee table he had served a scented tea and multiple succulents to accompany it, such as lemon, wild fruit and apple and cinnamon cakes that smelled delicious, all freshly baked, Belader looked at them trying to hide his hunger. Go ahead, please, have a seat, eat what you like please the old man, but composed Pyreal sat down heavily in front of him and took a lemon cake, looked at it for a second and put it whole in his mouth. So quickly as he served it, he sipped some tea, cleared his throat and continued I can't resist these sweets, they are so good you can eat them in one bite. Belader nodded politely as he took an apple and cinnamon pastry, it was true, the smell was irresistible and the creaminess of the apples was so obvious to the eye that it made you want the portion to be much larger. Belader ate it slowly under the watchful eye of Pyreal who seemed to be accommodating his ideas. Well my dear lord, Belader, or Belader the historian, what do you prefer to be called? I don't care, there are quite a few historians in the Rhianer anyway, what matters is that they remember that I'm not one of them, but Belader, no more, no less. Pyreal laughed heartily, took another lemon cake and made it disappear instantly. You are very funny, my dear lord. Belader, just call me Belader, it's easier, after all you are the one who pays for my services, the formalities may remain in the street for a moment. Very good then Pyreal took up his words as they had left before you already know that the Grand Master requires certain information for one of his projects and it occurred to him that perhaps some of it could come from his deep studies of history by the Rhianer. Belader raised his finger interrupting Pyreal excuse me. But the truth is that my studies go beyond just the Rhianer, I have tried to gather everything we know in the Rhianer of Earthria, but as you should know, the limitations are too many for a simple man like me. Sure, sure, I know what you mean, there are certainly many limitations, almost as if something or someone didn't want to know what's beyond the Rhianer Pyreal's gaze sharpened at that moment, just a second. Belader drank a long drink of tea. He did not want to delve too deeply into that, but if his client and patron wanted information about this and other things he had to say everything he knew, he could not risk his name and past efforts on this, and what would it be? What does the Grand Master need to know that he can't find in Nimriadil's huge library? Pyreal regained his posture, took a wild fruit cake and dipped it with a little tea, Slowly the sponge cake was absorbing the perfumed concoction our library is certainly huge, although not as big as Trandis as Belader nodded, but they both knew that the content of both was very different but however great our source of knowledge is, it does not have books as old as Trandis, we both know that after Aragmador, Trandis is the oldest city of all. Very true, but your servant has read and reread much of the material in that library, with the Queen's permission of course. Well, I can't hide that one of the reasons you are here is that, but not the most important one the alchemist removed his bulging beard, trying to pull out all the crumbs that he had dropped on the muffins. But let's not rush, you have several days to stay and I need several days to obtain the information. Belader looked at his empty cup and immediately poured another one, he was not very amused that the alchemists wanted to delve into the deepest knowledge of the Rhianer, but after all they themselves were part of the origins of the times. Besides, his reputation as a historian was at stake, but the most important thing, it was the alchemists who supported him, so there was no way he could refuse well, I suggest starting at the beginning, the most elementary question, Remember that when we talk about history the sources tend to be many, some of them even contradictory, so my stories may be meaningless if it weren't for the fact that myself have been in charge of giving them one in search of their verisimilitude, but I cannot assure their certainty. 
Pyreal smiled I know very well my dear. I should say, the previous warning exempts me from any kind of misinterpretation, especially when we're talking about centuries ago, and for some reason I think that's what we'll do. The alchemist laughed openly again. When he regained his calm he took two cakes, one with wild berries and the other with apple and ate them without even breathing you are quite insightful, as well as a very funny guy. Well, well, let's start at once, that food runs out soon and talking without food is not my thing. Belader tried to hide his revulsion, the more he talked to the bearded and chubby alchemist, the more he felt that he had gotten into the wrong place and that this would all end badly. Well, Mr. Belader, one of the first doubts that assailed the Grand Master comes from the origins of the uninterrupted succession of queens in Aragmador, what could you tell me about it? Doesn't it seem strange that's where the Trandis tradition of choosing only queens comes from? Belader swallowed and cleared his throat, the alchemist immediately noticed that the subject was to the historian's taste by the sparkle that appeared in his eyes. Well, the truth is that I tried to meet with the Queen of Aragmador quite some time ago, but unfortunately, I believe, she is secluded on an island that can only be accessed and remained under the permission of Judge Lucanus, and I am not given dealing with those of the order very well, so at that time I decided to try to gather information in the place of origin, of course, we are talking about Aragmador, the torn city. Don't even mention it, please. Enough with all the extra anecdotes that you are going to tell on your way to answer my question, if we get stuck in the huge rift, however interesting the story is, we will never end, let's leave it for another moment about the crack, or the tear, whatever they call it, otherwise, you know, the food runs out pretty quickly and I really suffer from fatigue. Belader looked in another direction, trying to get his pupils away from the alchemist's belly, where all the cakes had inevitably accumulated and perhaps what other batch of things he had to gobble up without rhyme or reason every day. Belader resumed his words I tried to find data on the origin of this tradition, if we can call it that, because it goes without saying that it is one of the strangest things we can find. First, Aragmador can only be ruled by a woman, second, that woman cannot have any partner, much less marry that would immediately lead to his irremediable exile and the start of a tournament of roses, third, a queen must defend her position every 24 harvest periods. However, I must add that there are some variants to this rule that indicate that it is recent, there is even something that I cannot understand about all this. Say it bluntly dear, that's why you're here. Is right. The truth is that since the queen of the period of northern splendor, each of them was too long on the throne, before that the queens used to only last the established period, but something changed in that period. Does it have something to do with the strange longevity of the queens? It could be said, but it was not the queen of that period who held the position the longest, but the current one, well, there is a lot to add about it, most of them are my assumptions. Of course I first tried to make a physical comparison of each one, maybe there was something there, but obviously I was wrong, all of course were recognized warriors in their times, after all we talked about the queen being chosen through a fencing tournament, but I will not deviate and get to the point, to the origin of the tournament itself. As I was saying, the origin of the tournament itself goes back many decades to the time known as the Northern Splendor. But before that, some things have to be defined about the three points I mentioned. Regarding the first is that it originates in an ancient story, a legend already at this point that has as its origin the goddess of courage, patroness of Aragmador according to the priests of the worship of the ancient gods, the second point they say themselves, the priests, has a grip there too and with respect to the third, apparently it is a divine command from the mouth of the goddess herself that is, it may or may not, that all this has its primitive origin in a rather strange legend and at the same time in an ancient tradition from the early days of Aragmador. I suppose we are talking about before the Holy War. That's right, 
Long before, when Aragmador was a small town, a village near Lake Keat, closer to the mountains than its current location. The Grey Priests say that the Goddess of Bravery walked on the inner back then, when the earth was new and men knew nothing of life, they say that some of the gods wandered all over earth relaying the foundations of our current society and that the very goddess made the decision that a woman should rule over the rest and give them an accurate guide, but this is closely related to the tradition of the Roses of the Mountain, the legend of which I spoke. Tell the storytellers and the bards of the sector, who handle the song that speaks about it by heart, that the locals brought the goddess every beginning of the heat, a retinue of young girls with the best roses to crown her divine throne, an offering of purity and honor the song says, this is how the goddess, responding to this beautiful offering determined that one of the maidens would be the first leader of the people that she herself had guarded until then, so she could go to her rest in the celestial kingdoms. If you put it that way, it seems perfectly plausible, but it's still no more than a children's story. It is no less true that the vast majority of the information of those days is preserved only in these so-called folk tales, in the knowledge and oral tradition of the peoples, which often contain certain truths, depends on who looks at it and on the information gathered about it will determine what you want to keep. Pyreal took the last of the apple cakes, broke it in half, and handed the piece to Belader. No thanks, I think I'm pretty full already. Well, much more for me, can't be wasted right. Belader continued to hope that he would soon reach the end of his story, the company of his patron was beginning to make him feel like vomiting these same songs say that the first queen decided, by divine inspiration, that only the strongest could command over the rest of the town, at that time, and therefore every twenty-four periods. In the same celebration for the goddess, the bravest and strongest women had to fight to a duel to take the place that the goddess of courage had decided to grant to whoever had the strength to do it the historian took a breath, he knew he was leaving much in the pipeline, but there was no time to continue, Pyreal had already finished with all the food in short, the whole origin of this is part of a myth, what is true and what is not, it is something quite mysterious, maybe one day I managed to find the truth. I hope that soon I can speak directly with the Queen, but for the moment that possibility is only a dream." Pyreal wiped his beard once more and then licked each of his fingers with a face of pleasure, what do you think about the exile of the Queen? Are you a supporter of their return? For the historian, giving his personal opinion was almost like committing a crime, although in reality he enjoyed the other side of the story much more than the official side and it was not that he had any close relationship with Aragmador, but the issue was controversial throughout the inner, in the domes of power, many times the return of the queen was considered a defeat for the nascent democracy, a strange form of government that ended up being the biggest mistake of those who had established it, as in Mariner, he thought. Well, it's not that I'm especially sensitive to the subject, but the loss of such an ancient tradition is a pity for me, it's even painful, after all, if it is really the gods who put it in its place. Who are we? Us to go against him? Pyreal lowered his gaze and stood up I did not imagine that you were a believer, I advise you not to become so attached to the gods, well you know that humanity has won. What people call the forgetfulness of the gods is not such, Belader looked at him seriously, he knew quite well what he was referring to, my dear Belader, we are all sunk up to our necks in an inevitable spiral of events, today you are here and tomorrow who knows. Proceeding with caution seems to be the only way out, even for me who is so close to those who are about to change the world. Pyreal advanced towards the exit under the watchful eye of Belader who had been stunned, see you at dinner, and come prepared, we are not going to be alone, you know that your popularity within the most cultured circles calls out certain admirers. Belader smiled I'm always delighted to meet my admirers Pyreal left the room leaving a strange intense air in the huge room. Belader would have wanted to run back to Trandis, 
he was sure that the above had been a kind of threat and he began to fear that his stay among the alchemists would not end quietly. Si nuestro trabajo te ha gustado, no olvides darle like y suscribirte para recibir notificaciones de nuestras próximas historias. Si quieres apoyar nuestro proyecto editorial, puedes seguirnos en Patreon o apoyar en forma directa mediante Flow en los links de la descripción.